Uh, now, Bet, um, Davies and Betts, they uh, they claim that um, when you go to these higher order corrections uh, in perturbation theory, you know, band of squares and so forth, uh, you get terms that can be interpreted as uh, having several several photons that get emitted or absorbed at the same time. Now that's that's just thrown at you. It's just stated, um, not proved at all. Uh, you need to go to, to high level stuff um, to see where that comes from. <laughs> so, so I've put here exclamation mark question mark exclamation mark. That's that's my comment, right? So um, just for general interest, you're not expected to be able to see why that's the case. <coughs> well, that's my interpretation anyway. Okay. Now, uh, an example here, uh, an example of what? Well, when you, like your MRK, that, um, what, what, what did it get relabeled at? The dipole matrix element. I was, previously I was calling it the perturbation matrix. But you know, this, this here. Now, uh, an example of when this uh, does go zero is uh, when your system is spherically symmetric. Like, for example, a hydrogen atom, uh, S layer, you know, or your, if you like, the cloud of the electron around the nucleus is um, spherical. Uh, probability density it takes a spherically symmetric form. Okay? Now, uh, so under those circumstances, you get this kind of thing. Now, uh, why is that? Uh, wasn't explained explicitly in the text. Uh, I was thinking a bit about it. Um, here's my take on it anyway. See, see if you can come up with an alternative. But um, now R is just an odd function, right? So if you, you replace R by minus R, uh, it's minus what you had originally. So, so it's you know it's an odd function. Now if you're talking uh, a spheric spherically symmetric system. Uh, like, if your R's that way, or that way, or that way, or any way, in a spherically symmetric system, it's all the same, right? You, you, you shouldn't be able to tell the difference. So, um, so if you put uh, minus R here, uh, you know, wh whatever your R is here, you should get the same thing, right? Because, because it's spherically symmetric. Do, it doesn't matter you know, whatever your R is. Uh, this, this should be the same. Now, if you put a minus R here, uh, so you can take the min minus outside, and then you just get MRK, but uh, whether you have R or minus R here, the whole thing should be the same, because, because of spherical, uh, it's spherically symmetric. And uh, the only way those two can be compatible, you know, uh, bra operator ket equals minus bra operator ket, you know, because you've taken the minus R, you've taken the minus out of the front. The only way those two are compatible, you know, uh, something equals minus something, uh, is the something is zero. So it's okay. Uh, and there's, I mean, there's an exception to that, and that is um, if these two have opposite uh, opposite parity. Okay. Now, again, um, this sort of stuff here is uh, just provided for interest. It's not uh, deduced, it's just stated. Um, you know, we, are, we are in the last leg now, so uh, quite a bit of stuff just uh, thrown in for, um, for general interest rather than being deduced. Now, um, this, this kind of analysis that we've been doing, it leads to uh, a way to show but the photon, in fact, is a spin one particle, uh, and that means it's a boson. I remember saying earlier, uh, half integer spin particles are fermions, and fermions are the kind of matter. Uh, they're the particles, <laughs> and the bosons they have uh, integer spin, like zero, one, two. The the graviton, the supposed quantized um, gravitational field uh, is theorized to have a spin of 2 
Now the photon has a spin of one, so it's a boson. And uh, other particle, other bosons spin zero. Now, uh, from from this kind of analysis, um, if you study um, di uh, electric dipole radiation, uh, what what does that mean? Like like if you had a, a dipole, you know, two poles, so you have sort of positive charge hit more here and negative here, and it and it oscillates or something, so you get uh, you get radiation coming out. You deduce that from uh, classical electromagnetic theory. Uh, but the, the um, quantum form, um, you know, just stated by uh, Betts, this is the sort of thing probably uh, you'd be studying more if you do, if you go, if you, if you go on, in uh, quantum e electrodynamics, QED, in, in the quantum form. Anyway, the, 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 the L, the from your eigen um, angular momentum in quantum mechanics, uh, its change uh, with, um, let's see, what are we absorbing radiation or? I mean, it doesn't matter. So either absorbing or emitting radiation, the, the change in your L has to be plus or minus one. Okay? And similarly, it can be shown that uh, the change in the component of the angular momentum along a given axis m, uh, change in m is either 0 or plus or minus 1. And from, from these results, uh, you can actually, um, that you can deduce that the photon uh, that gets emitted you know, carries, carries away angular momentum of one unit, you know, just h bar. So uh, that means the photon is a spin 1 particle, uh, which is, now that's interesting. So, uh, there are two broad, well, yeah, two broad categories of particles, uh, the fermions and the bosons. Actually, one of my research interests, uh, one of my strong interests, is uh, the so-called anions, A-N-Y-O-N. And they're called anions because they have any spin. And they exist largely in two dimensions. Uh, oh, I could talk for ages on that, but... Uh, just, just be conscious of something else besides fermions and bosons with um, half in integer spins and integer spins. There's some, there, there are things called uh, anions. Uh, they're quasi-particle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I won't go into what they are. But uh, they have a strong link with uh, topological quantum computing. And hence, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in them. Right? So... Now, uh, change of topic somewhat. So uh, we've been talking about uh, stimulated 